Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. And in this one, I'm gonna continue on the topic of independent building and debugging on your STM32. So in this video, I'm gonna continue by talking to how you can download or flash your firmware onto your STM32 platform. For this demonstration, I'm using the same project as before, but for some demonstration purposes, I've also added the USART3 over here. So we can also see something coming from the UART and I have connected an external FTDI module. I'm gonna have some images on the screen of the setup. So I just soldered up together one specific FTDI chip. Uh, I'm gonna tell you later why so. And for the demonstration, let me open up the browser. I have two of the same STM32 boards, but there's a difference. One it has the original ST-Link firmware on the debugger chip but the other one has a J-Link version and you can do that by going to the J-Link's official site. I'm going to leave this link in the description and it has unfortunately only a Windows only version of a software that converts the ST-Link to a J-Link, but it can also revert back to the ST-Link. So there's no permanent damage. And uh, this is sort of the same if you were to use an external like this one or I have an educational version, the white one. Uh, so it's just a replacement for different platforms. So you can see in this video which one you might want to use. So I'm going to demonstrate on the original ST-Link, on the J-Link and then on independent software that can work in terminal and in the end over the UART. And I'm going to tell you all about it in the end. So I'm going to have some timestamps in the video description. So let's firstly start with the project. So I have it, I hope, uh, hopefully it's large enough for you to see. So this is the project that I'm be using. I have configured the real time clock to trigger an interrupt every second. So this function will execute. And what it does, it just has a static counter that will increment by one each time as it prints it into the message string. And then it's gonna print over the single wire output, which is the debug output, which I have discussed in the previous video. So I suggest you to check that out. And also the UART one. So it's also going to print it through UART and toggle the LED. So one second off, one second on and so on. So this is what with this example you should be seeing. So here's the folder. So this is this video folder and this is the project folder and it's the same structure as before. I have just organized it so I can see the terminal over here. So let's firstly build our project by just typing in make and let's give it four cores to have it faster. So we have the output binary in the build directory. So this is where we're going to be looking into. So for the first demonstration is the most universal and it's the one that you're going to be using when you buy these boards and it's to use the ST32's provided cube programmer. So this is a cross platform device or in this case software for Linux, Mac and Windows. And it looks something like this. I unfortunately cannot do anything about the zoom. Uh, there is no additional zoom information. So hopefully this is large enough for you. And as you can see on the right side, it can also detect one of the discovery boards, which has the ST-Link firmware and it, and it detects it as st 32 f 4 discovery board. These settings are all the same. So reset is hardware reset. And if you click connect, it's going to connect to the board and it will display the memory contents. But we do not care about that. We want to go into the download. You can expand this menu. It says erasing and programming. And here you want to enter the path to your binary. In this case, it's our video project, uh, uh, project, build, and here's the binary. I've also ticked the run after programming. So the program will start right after uh, we finish downloading. And if to do that, you just click start programming. And as you can see, a bunch of notifications, the download was verified and download complete. We can then disconnect it. But for uh, the demonstration, I can see that the LED is blinking. To show you that it is, we can go to the serial wire viewer which will connect to that uh, SWO output. You firstly have to, uh, as I mentioned in the previous videos, enter the exact frequency of the processor. I'm going to be using the first stimulus port and we're just going to click start and it should start printing that 
message. So counter equals and the number which will be incrementing. So this is working well and we can disconnect over here. So this is all finished. So this is the most universal way that you can do it. So you can compile manually in any terminal using just make and the project is up to date and then you can use the software to flash it each time. So just go into this menu and because it remembers the path from the previous download, you can just click start programming. But still, this is a bit clunky and inconvenient because we want to uh, automate a few things. We just don't want to click all the time. Maybe we want to have it done automatically. So for that, I'm going to be using a different tool called ST-Link, which is the same as the hardware. Uh, you can find it on GitHub. And they have a few releases, so I'm going to be using the latest release, version 1.7.0. And you can clone this GitHub repository. And I'm going to open it right now in the external terminal, so it can be a lot larger. So we can see all the folders. So this is the ST-Link GitHub project. Let me cd into it. And as you can see, here's the number that my ZSH displays. And if we look at the log, this is the release version 1.7.0 tag, which I have uh, copied into. So the master is way ahead of this, but I have re uh, managed to view the commit, which is for the release version 1.7.0. So just look up on YouTube how to uh, hook up on a specific tag, or if you don't want to mess around with Git, you can go into the release page with all the fixes and just download the source code and you don't have to worry. And this is the source code for this release. To build the project, you just click, you need the CMake because this is running CMake and just dot and this is gonna configure the make file for the current directory. And as you can see, it has configured this make file which we can run with make. And let's give it four cores and voila, it just compiled that quickly and all the files are located in bin. Let's go into bin. And here we have all the executables, so st flash, st info that we've been familiar before. We can run them like this, so st info, and it gives us a few versions, so let's go st info, and let's give it probe, and it has detected the appropriate st link for the board, and it has detected that it's an F4 IC. What else can we have? We can have also a serial. And we get the serial number. That's great. But what we want is the ST flash. Now it would be a bit clunky to use the absolute path, which is this whole thing over here, to each time execute the ST flash. So we can put it into a global link. And to do that, I like to put all my manually added links into user slash uh, local slash bin, where are all the manually added uh, binaries. And right now this file is in fact in the stlink directory in this video project folder, but I would suggest to put it in slash opt. Uh, that's where I put all my manually added programs. So you can see I already have the stlink, which was branded before the version 1.6.1. If I run stlink, ST flash, you can see that it finds and it's the version 1.7. Uh, and this one is the one that is installed here, just the older name. So all the manually added programs I have in the slash opt. So that I would suggest you put this folder into slash opt. And then when you do that, you go into the these links and you will need a uh, uh, super user privileges. You will create a link which is coming from here. Let's get our path. So this is our path, but in your case, it will be slash opt slash st link slash bin slash st flash. And we will name it for my sake st flash because I already have the st dash flash installed. So this is with just this one. I'm going to put in my password. Oh, I maybe mucked it up. Here it is. So now it's accessible from anywhere. So I can go into the home directory and it's available. This is the first step. So now we can use the ST flash. So let's go into the code because I already have the terminal over here. We can use all also ST flash, ST flash over here. Great. And the syntax is pretty easy to understand. You just firstly write write. 
so we can write to the memory. Then we need the location to the binary, which in this case is in the build. It doesn't, oh, it does autocomplete test.bin and then location in the memory. If you remember before in the queue programmer, this is the memory location that it automatically has, which is the correct one. So let's just copy that one and paste it in here. But we can also add a flag, additional flag in the beginning over here, dash dash reset, which will reset the board after successfully programming it. And if I click enter, wow, it did it. So flash written and verified. And the program is running as before. So this is the second method. And don't worry, I'm only demonstrating this on Linux, but if you saw this before, it's a multi-platform. It can be compiled as long as you have CMake, Make, Lend, LibUSB, and some basic libraries, and it should be set. There are a few tips how to compile a different platforms. If you go to the web page, uh, it has all the tutorials and how to install it on different platforms. It's Windows, Mac OS, and Linux, of course. So this is the second option for the ST-Link. Now let's go to the J-Link, so to the other board on my desk. So you can download the after reflashing your ST-Link or if you have a J-Link board, uh, the debugger itself, you can download the tool from sager.com downloads J-Link. And here you can go to the, the software and documentation pack. And as before, we have Mac OS, Windows and Linux installations. I think I downloaded this one, so just the archive, and I've put it in my folder. And if we go back to the console, let's go back to the root. And here it is. This is the latest one that I've downloaded now. And if we go into the J-Link, we have quite a lot of software and links. And the one that we are interested in is this one, the J-Link EXE. So let's run this one by in this path, J-Link EXE, enter. And this is the first message that we'll get. This is when you use the free boards like the education version and this one that have been refreshed. Uh, so this is the terms of, uh, of use for these types of board. But if you're using the commercial one, the black one that you have paid a lot of money, you shouldn't be getting this. So do not show this for today and accept. And firstly, well, we need to connect. Then you put in the whole name for your device. So in this case is the st 32 f 407 vg but nothing more. So because it's already in here, default, you can just click enter. Then you specify our interface is SWD, so type in S. And then the target speed, we're going to leave it a default, just click enter. And it has connected with no problem. As you might have saw before, the voltage reference, which is just reading the voltage, was also successfully written. If you had a bad connection, this will read uh, zero volts and it will give you an error. Now, to flash the firmware, you're going to be using a simple command called load bin. And then you need the path to the binary. So this path is one folder back. Or let's just give it an absolute path. So let's just uh, open another terminal. Let's go back. So let's go to test, build. So let's do a path to here. Let's just copy this path into here slash test dash uh, f407vg.bin is the name of the file and then we also have to put in the address which is 08123456789 this is how i remember or 8 if you put one zero in before and you click enter and it did it it flashed but if you would look at your board and currently i'm looking at it the led is not blinking that's because the default, the uh, STM is on halt. So to start working, we're going to send in a reset uh, called R and then G to start. And G is going to start. And if I look to my board on left, it's blinking right now. So that's no problem. But you might have seen because the same firmware was already on the board. It already detected that. So it just skipped the flashing process. But if the firmware would be too different, it would flash it and then type in G and to enter exit QC. And this is all there is to it. But again, you might have thought there's a lot of manual steps that we had to do in a separate window, but we can automate this. So let's go to Visual Studio Code and let's try to automate this firstly with makefile. 
So that's gonna open the make file that we already discussed in the previous videos. The only modification was that we added a flag, a compiler flag, so it does not uh, complain about the unused variables. So let's go to the bottom and we're gonna add another build. So let's create it called jflash. So a command that will be executed that will flash the board. The first prerequisite we want that there's a binary existing in the build folder. To do that, we're gonna call in build dir slash. This one is already target. So this is the name of the project that will be. And if you look at the target, where it is, it's in the beginning over here. So it's already defined as test-f407vg. So this is our name. So this is how you can more abstract the name. So it can vary between different uh, projects. And when this file exists and is up to date, we want to execute a few things. So firstly, we want to launch the jflash jlink exe. And just like before, when I put in a link to the uh, user slash local slash bin, you can put this file as you might have saw in my opt. So let's leave my opt. So here's where I have my jlink and I have a path to this one. So the jlink exe is available from anywhere on the system. So the same way you can do it before with stlink, you can do it with jlink. So we can uh, launch the jlink. So let me exact name. So this is the all the large letters and small letters. And then we have an ability to give the jlink a whole list or a file with all the commands that we want to put in. So the command for that is with one dash commander script. So we want to put in a script for that to exist. We need to create that script. So let's create one. So let's call it uh, something like uh, it's going to be in the build directory. So it's not going to litter in our root directory and let's call it just j flash. So to create this file, something has to exist. So let's just move the dependence of this target over here. So and let's move the dependence of j flash onto this file. So what we have done right now. So every time we're going to call the make j flash, it's going to see for the existence and updates of this file. And this file to create it is going to see the prerequisite of this binary. So we're just cascading the uh, prerequisite. So to create it, I have just a quick script and I'm going to show it to you and tell you what it's all doing. So firstly, I've added this variable called device uh, and I've added it this way because there's nowhere already defined in this make file and you need it in the beginning, as you might have saw before, when you click in jlink, so it knows which device it will program. So what we're doing is we're creating a file with the name over here. And this means the name of the target. So this is this. So we're creating the file with touch command. So we're going to have to find the Windows and Mac OS equivalent. But Mac OS, I think, has the same one. And then we're just going to echo lines into the file. So the first one will uh, line in device and the name of the device into the freshly created file. And the next one is going to uh, enter this command, new line speed 4000 and then the this one is gonna create load bin with the name of name of the first prerequisite which is the name of the binary file so this is the location of the binary file and then the location to uh, upgrade and then last one is gonna do reset go and quit and you're gonna stand it when we run it so let's save this make file and run make j flash it recompiles because the make file has been updated. And then we have an error. So let's debug it. So, oh, of course, we had to provide it this file. So dollar. So this is this command in make is the first prerequisite, which is this one. So we're giving it an input of this file. So let's run it again. Oh, but this is but it has already created this file. So let's look at it. So let's open it in code build j flash. So this is the file that we have created. So device, uh, the, uh, the selection for the uh, interface. Uh, so this is the uh, SWD, speed 4000, load this bin, reset, go and quit. So this is what we're inputting into our jlink exe. And now we can probably run it. So it recompiles because there has been a change in the make file. 
and as you saw, it run everything automatically. If you have a problem, it might loop uh, and then quit. But if there's no problem, if you have everything connected and all the files exist, and you, if this recipe of the commander script is correct, it will execute as you saw, and this is it. So this is how you can automate it with uh, simply as that. But because in v VS Code and in the previous video, we also created tasks for like building and cleaning. So if I click Control Shift B, I can reach this too, but I can also copy this one and let's call it label, let's call it uh, J flash. And we are gonna run make J flash. And let's also give it four cores. Uh, if in, there's a case that it needs to recompile, so we're gonna give it two lines. So control shift B, J flash, oh, made a typo, but still it did it everything. So this is how we can also integrate it into the uh, uh, cube, I, uh, so th this one in the code. And we can also add, and let's fix this typo, we can add st flash, so we can add it for the st link. So make, and let's go back to make file and add it for st link as before. So let's go st flash, we're gonna create it. And this one will only have a dependence on this one. We don't need any scripts for this one as you saw before. So st flash is the one that I have. So st flash. Yeah, so this one is the one. Then reset, then write, and then first prerequisite. So write this one into the location of the memory. Let's just copy this one. So this is the way we did it before. So this is the whole command, but we're just replacing this path with the given first prerequisite. Now let's run make, let's clean it. Let's run make st flash. And this will firstly recompile with one core. And then it flashed. And this is all. And we can also add it over here. So let's just run make j flash and make st flash with four cores. So if we control shift b, here's the st flash it will run it for us, which is great. So it's automated. So it, it's one button and before it uh, flashes, it also compiles it because it's also the first prerequisite, which is great. So this is the third option. And then now I have the last option, which is the fourth one, which is using the STN32 flash utility. I know these names just kind of overlap, but this one is using the USB bootloader that is built into every STN32 IC. You can download this application notes which describe the USART protocol for the STN32 bootloader on each of the platforms, and this is how it works, but there's also the another application note which describes how to use it. In this application note, you can select for all the different devices and see how we can use the bootloader. So if I find the 4O series over here, which is the one that I have, if you scroll, it describes all the different connections to the internal bootloader. The internal bootloader works in a way that the boot pin, which is usually reserved, let me show it to you. So this pin, which is the boot zero pin, is usually on low, which means that the microcontrollers upon the restart, it will uh, start the program from the flash. But if this boot pin is on one, and in larger processors like this one, it also has a condition on the particular pin called PB2, which is over here. And a combination of these two pins states it will boot from different memory, either from RAM or the internal ROM, which is baked into it and cannot be overwritten. And this ROM has the bootloader, which is baked into it, that uses different uh, protocols like USART1 and 3 on different pins, so on PB and PC. And then it also has a CAN and a DFU, which uses the USB connector to do it. But today I'm gonna just show you how you can use it on this particular one, so the PC10 and PC11. And I have connected, as the uh, images on the screen, the, uh, uh, the different UART module that I have. For this need, you will need a UART module that has a reset, which is most of them, but also the DTR. The DTR is not present on something like an ST-Link cable, only the CTS or CTL is present. But you need the one that has the DTR. This is how it currently is in the software. Uh, hopefully there will be an update to use that CTL. 
So when you connect it to these UART pins that I have for this demonstration, I can firstly show you how the device is operating. I can use a TO for the for the interface over the serial and just give it the TTY USB one. And this is what it's printing on the UART. So this device has been on for some time right now. So this is the printing over UART, but we're going to be using the same UART for programming. And what it will do, it will firstly need to reset the board. Secondly, it needs to change the state of the boot pin. And for this particular processor, we also have to manually wire also the PB2 to be on ground. And then uh, it has to uh, uh, re unrestart it and it will enter the bootloader mode. You will notice that your program will not run, but the bootloader will run. And then it will talk to the bootloader, flash the new firmware, and then uh, change the boot pin back to low, as it should be to boot from flash, and then it will restart the board for you. To do that, you will need to download and compile this software called STN32 Flash, and let's go to the terminal to show it to you. So it's over here. Just a note, for me, the version 05 works, but 06, which is the latest, doesn't. So keep in mind when trying this method. We can go in and just run simply make, let's give it four cores, and it already did it. And here is the executable, STM32 flash. So it has a few uh, cookbook advices how to do, you can change the baud rate, and I think the maximum is 115,200, uh, so this is the faster that it supports, and a few different useful flags. So let just give me, let me give you the whole command. So let me copy this one and copy it here. So we're firstly gonna run this local one. So STM32 flash. The R flag means that it will reset when it's uh, stopped working. The I is the input sequence in which we will do all the operations. And this is means that firstly it's gonna toggle the reset, then the DTR, which is remember connected to the uh, controller for the boot pin. In this case, we want to make it high. So this is the without the minus symbol. Let me just stop you for a bit on my Windows virtual machine that I have over here. This FTDI model just needs one modifications on the IC and you can do that by going in this case in the QMU and on VirtualBox I can pass in my device and this is this one. This is the cable that I have but this is this one. So here's the device that I have connected, so you can see that it's passed to Windows, in this case it's COM port 10. It's, it's fiddly, it sometimes doesn't want to really work, uh, because um, probably it's the virtual machine. But nevertheless, these are the settings, you can download this software called FTProg from FTDI's website. And when you load up the device, it will read its internal EEPROM, and you have a bunch of different settings, and you can change different limits, your uh, vendor's IDs, which you don't, really don't want to, but something like the name, so config descriptor, and the uh, USB string, you can rename it, uh, but I've mostly found that if you leave it stuck, it will find drivers much faster. And then in here, invert the RS-232 signals, you want to tick this one to invert the DTR. By default, the DTR is active low, but this will mean that by default, the DTR will be low, uh, high. And in this case, the boot pin would be high and you wouldn't be able to boot into your program when just programming away. So if you invert the DTR signal by checking this one and then clicking flash and program, and it will program the device successfully, this will make it so that the DTR is by default always low and when you enable it, it will go high. So this is just a simple trick that you can do, uh, otherwise you will need an inverter in between. And then we're gonna stop the reset. And then after flashing, this is the second portion, as it says this is the entry sequence, which is the first part, and this is the exit sequence after the colon. It's gonna reset it again, it's gonna toggle the DTR low, and then it's gonna unreset it. Uh, it's right inverse because reset is low, active low, but in this case you have to write it like this. And then just give it the path, in Windows it should be the COM port, and then if I click enter just without anything, and if I plug in my device, and now I have plugged in my device and let's run it. As you saw, it connected with the default baud rate, and it 
looked at the device, it knows which the device is, and it did reset. And I can see that the LED is blinking with the preloaded firmware. If we want to change the baud rate, we can go in front over here and do again dash B, 115,200, and enter, and it will reconnect and change the baud rate to be faster. And now to flash firmware, we have to do it at the end over here, dash W, and we could also do dash V, which will verify it, so it, it's a safer. And then we need a path to the uh, binary, so let's go one back to test build test.bin. And this should flash the board with the new firmware, and it's also gonna toggle all the reset and boot pins for us, so we don't need to do it manually. In most videos you probably saw people uh, flipping on jumpers and clicking reset buttons by themselves, but if you have the appropriate uh, debugger, or in this case just a simple UART module that has the DTRP available, you don't need to do anything manually. And the first thing it will do automatically is erase memory. But there's also an option to skip this if you think that everything's working. If it gives you an error at this stage without erasing the memory, then you might want to erase memory firstly. As you can see, now it's flashing. And you can see that it's a bit slower than you are uh, or the uh, debugger because it's running uh, at least 10 to uh, 40 times slower. But it did it. To omit this erasing at the beginning, we can go and add a flag. Let's, let's put it over here dash e zero and if we go into the previously mentioned instruction manual it says that dash e uh, n will erase n pages and with n being zero it will erase nothing so let's run this and it should connect and immediately start writing to the memory and after it's done i can see on my board that the led is blinking so let's connect to to or in this case you might want to use putty one note, uh, I just did a little bit of fingling, the DTR pin sh has to be low in order to toggle it. And it somehow happens that when I use, in this case, TO, and also with PuTTY, when I use it to connect to my UART, it toggles the DTR pin high and reset pin low, which disables the operation. So I had to disconnect those two wires. So I'm going to be looking in the future how to so uh, go around that. But if you have something like an FTDI cable, which I'll have on the screen right now, which I also have, you just omit this part whole by yourself. So let me do that for the demonstration. I'm just going to remove this part. And before we do that, we have to put it in the bootloader mode, which means I have to toggle my reset pin low to reset the board. And then the bootloader pin, the boot zero to high. And in my board's case, it also has the PB2 on low to select from memory. And now if uh, I re restart it, so I go back, reset to high, I toggle it to high, it should be in bootloader mode. And if I click uh, this one, and I also want to omit the reset. If I enter this, as you can see, it has successfully entered the bootloader mode and it writes. And then I remove the DTR pin and put it back to the ground and put the reset to high to unreset it and in this case my board is blinking and let's open TO again and as you can see it's working. So this is the fourth and final version of course like the previous ones it's cross-platform as long as you can have all the tools to compile it I think you just need the libUSB and some basic libraries and you're probably set. Like in the previous method you can put this in the make file or in the global uh, community. So I have ST32 flash available in my user local pin. And if we go back to the VS code, we can add another one. In this case, let's call it uflash. Again, we have the prerequisite of this binary file existing and then call it ST32 flash. And let's lay out the whole recipe we had here before, which is this one. No, the previous one that for the whole one. So this is the the complete one. If you have the correct uh, UART device, and uh, let's replace this with the first prerequisite. So it's a bit shorter, and let's remove this space over here, and this should be it. So if I reconnect all the pins directly to the interface board. So I'm going to plug in the DTR 
and the reset like this and save this and I'm just gonna run make you flash it will recompile and then it's gonna start updating if you make want to make it more universal we can add a variable instead of this device if your com port changes so let's just call it port and this variable if it's missing it's gonna complain so if you run make you flash it's gonna firstly recompile and then it's gonna complain that well this variable is missing so to do that we can provide it with a variable like this when you call it so in this way dev eti usb1 and this should work so this is a more universal way you can do it or if you don't have a particular ftdi module that has the dtr pin just omit this whole part including the reset and do it manually like we did before and it should also work so i that's all that i have to show you for today i hope that these ways are uh, uh, beneficial to you so you can start implementing your own download as you saw this is trivial especially the debugger ones were really fast and with vs code and the task that you can create it's really fast you, you can also of course create a uart task so yeah you let's call it uart flash and run j j link u flash and control shift b uart flash it will of course recompile with four cores so it's a bit faster and it uh, oh th we added the another recipe so let's go back so let's return back to the one which i have and then added the dev tti usb but in this case we can just pu uh, put it in the make file but this way it's universal so again run the u flash Oh, this should be port equal and now it should work voila so it's working and it's vs code so you can compile and download your code quite fast even by using this method with your favorite id in this case vs code so hopefully this was uh, good for you if you have any questions or any specific problems with the implementation please comment down below hopefully it also mirrors this in the windows and mac os Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.